Another Saw film? What do we do? Hello. Do you want to play a game? Yeah. Um, how about playing cards? Sounds awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Well, we'll play some playing cards, man. Raindrops are falling on my head. What's up, Saw fans? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking Saw 8, 9, 10. Another one. Thank you. And just to preface here, I really like the first Saw. I'm a fan of one or two of the sequels, but as a whole, this franchise just hasn't done it for me since. Until now. Finally! And this is kind of like Saw 2. It's set between the events of Saw 1 and Saw 2, and you have John traveling to Mexico for a risky and experimental medical procedure in hopes of a miracle cure for his cancer, only to discover that the entire operation is a scam. And so you give a dying John Kramer a reason to get back into doing what he does best. Worst? What's the way to phrase that? Uh, it's probably not the best idea, but you know what? They do it, and thus we have another entry in the Saw franchise. But oh, this one's uh, still rated R for drug use, language, grisly, bloody violence, and torture. How sweet. One of the big debates I'm seeing on Twitter, I'm not calling it X, is essentially uh, this franchise is just torture porn. It's doing it for the sake of doing it without an interesting story in any of the movies, and I disagree with that. I think some of the Saw films have a purpose, have meaning, and have stories that are so well thought out, and I still, it's so simple to do, but I go back to the twist in the first Saw film, and I'm like, why haven't any of the movies, I know they've tried to recreate that, but why haven't any of the other films, why haven't they done it as well? Why? Why? I know it's hard to do, but come on, man, that was awesome. And seeing that movie for the first time, as young as I was, it was scary, but now that I'm older, it was cool. And even Saw 2, which is now Saw 3, kind of, I saw that film and I'm like, yeah, that's of the same quality, the first. I honestly believe that. I thought this franchise was off to a brilliant start. But after that, I ranged from okay to just plain bad. I haven't had that same feeling since the second film. But in comes Saw 10 to deliver not only a really cool and interesting and vengeful type of story with a little bit of an emotional connection that, first of all, I didn't expect, but obviously the main connection to the man, the myth, the legend himself, and my God. Tobin Bell is better than he's ever been as John Kramer. This is the best performance from him in this entire franchise, and it may just be my favorite performance from the entire franchise. He is everything you want this villainous, evil entity to be, but there is a purpose given to him in this film, and I read it in the summary, but there's a little bit more to it than that, to where his acts uh, at the beginning or towards the beginning of the movie, it's not that you agree with what he's doing, because obviously it's it's pretty evil, but there's a reason given to almost understand why he is so upset, to almost comprehend the reason why he's doing what he's doing. It's like you're not on board with his actions, obviously, but the first part, the first act of this film is so compelling, and you have this sense of hope, and there's a reasoning behind your emotional attachment to John Cramp. What did this movie do? do to me? I, what is this? What have they done to us? What did they do to us? It's the same feeling I got with watching Joker and Joaquin Phoenix. It's like, this is an evil man, but my God, the movie gives us a reason. And I've seen what he's done in all of the other films in the first movie. I'm just like, why? Wait, what? They're playing, they're toying with your emotions at the beginning of this film. And then you get into the traps, you get into what you sign up for a Saw movie for, and those while really interesting, they're not even my favorite part of this film. And I've never said that in a Saw movie. It's always the traps, it's always the blood, it's always the violence and the gore. And that's not a detriment to all of that craziness you see in this film because I thought those were really creative. Now they give you a tease in the poster as to one of the traps involving someone's eyes. And when you see that play out in the film, first of all, they do it 
in a really unexpected way. So that was cool. But when you see it play out, it's, it's everything you're going to want and more. Now, for me, I watched the Saw movies expecting this, and it's enjoyable. I've always struggled with this type of violence in a film. I can watch a war movie, people getting stabbed and shot and heads flying all like that's fine. But when it comes to medical type things, I know this isn't technically a medical type thing, but so strategic and the bones and the fingers and the arms and the heads, uh, it's just sometimes it gets to me. And there were a handful of traps in this movie. Some people consider it spoilery, so I'm not going to talk about the ones that aren't on the poster that got to me. And that's what a lot of people are going to want with this film. So that is going to appease a lot of fans if that's what you're here for. And it works. There have been some terrible Saw movies with one or two traps that are great. This is not a terrible Saw film. This is actually a really compelling story that gets even more in depth as we go because there are other factors introduced to this group of people in this one location and it makes things a bit more interesting and someone else that is joining John Kramer in On the Fun, uh, there is something going on with an emotional aspect to that character. Do you see how I'm trying to tiptoe around spoilers here? That makes that part. More interesting. So I'm like, exhibits A, B, and C, factors that I never expected watching a Saw film, got me emotionally invested in a Saw sequel. We're on the 10th movie. Why did I feel the way that I felt during this film? That is a testament to solid writing. Now, I'm not going to go overboard and say it's the most well-written horror script I've ever seen because that's not the case. You fall into plenty of cliches in this film. And there were opportunities to expand upon some of these character interactions and really to play more on the people that are involved in the traps themselves because you don't really get the proper fleshing out of any, I'm not going to say any, most of those characters. They're there. Each character falls into a specific category. You know what they're all about. You know their intentions. You know when they're trying to beg and plead and they're actually just a jerk. You understand that some people are there just because they were caught up in a bad situation. Maybe drugs were involved. Maybe they had to do it because they felt like they had to. And unfortunately, they messed with the wrong guy. So there isn't much more to the victims in this film than meets the eye. I wish we would have gotten one or two dynamic characters there. There is one. She was kind of pushing being a, a dynamic character, but I didn't quite feel the emotion that I was supposed to. It's more so at the one person on the other side of the glass. What's going on there? That's what you care about. That's what you're invested in. And the mystery aspect that we always get in these Saw films, it's kind of uh, it's kind of wiped away in this film. And you don't really get that same feeling while you're watching this sequel. That's why it's so different. You're not wondering, okay, who's doing this? Why are they doing this? No, you know exactly what's happening for the most part. Of course, there's going to be one or two things, but it's very uh, surface level from that standpoint, but I like it. And it's a story about vengeance. It's kind of a character study of sorts and some of the relationships that are explored. All of this I didn't expect from a Saw movie. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, it's not going to go down as one of the best movies of the year. It's going to win an Oscar. But for a 10th Saw film to be one of the best Saw films... You got to give kudos to the franchise, man. A franchise that I just wasn't super high on. But after this movie, I'm like, I could see another one of these. If you would just want to fill in the gaps, it's fine. <laughs> Let's see. I need it. Before I give you my score, what is your favorite Saw sequel? Would you like to see me rank the Saw movies? And uh, if you want to drop a like on this video, hey, I I'd appreciate that. As someone who hasn't been all in on this franchise, I can confidently say that Saw X is the best sequel of the bunch, and it may end up being my favorite of the franchise. Beyond the shocking moments, this gives us the best John Kramer we have seen yet. Tobin Bell is brilliant. The performance from top to bottom. It's menacing. It's heartfelt. It's emotional. It's great. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. Sorry it came so late. I've been having some uh, some uh, medical things pop up lately, but I think I'm feeling better or better than I was. We'll get through this. I'll see you guys soon. Do you have any fours? No. Hmm. Okay. You have any twos? No. All right.